Okay, this is Dr. Krauss, and one of my students in class today asked me to generate um, a bunch of practice problems for the midterm, and my response was, if you know how to check them in Python, you can create an infinite supply yourself. And so this is my attempt to help my students do that. So my suggestion is that you kind of arbitrarily make up transfer functions and or differential equations, and then choose an input. And so I'm going to do a step response. So a step input to this transfer function. And so when I multiply that times u of s, I'm going to get that y of s is 5s plus 7 over s times s squared plus 3s plus 2. And so I need to do a partial fraction expansion. The question is, what are the roots of this thing? And a core question is always to ask, is it underdamped or overdamped or what? And it turns out that that can be factored into s plus 1 times s plus 2. And you should be able to quickly verify that. I've made up the problem, so I happen to know that. And so I'm going to write this as 5s plus 7 over s times s plus 1 times s plus 2. So relatively straightforward. And so now I need to choose the form of my partial fraction expansion. And since I have distinct real roots, this is relatively straightforward. I could just write this as a over s plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s plus 2. I can then multiply both sides of this equation by this denominator, um, s, s plus 1, s plus 2. When I do that on the left, it'll cancel with everything, and so I'll be left with 5s plus 7. That will equal a, and a, the s cancels, but this still multiplies s plus 1, s plus 2. And then with b, the s plus 1 term cancels, so I'm left with bs times s plus 2, and then with c, the s plus 2 cancels, so I'm left with c, s times s plus 1. So there are many different trick ways to solve this. Uh, we haven't really talked about this a lot in class because we haven't done that many real solutions. So you could plug in, for example, s is equal to 0 and get a quick answer for a, or s is equal to negative 1 and get a quick answer for c, and s is equal to negative 2 and get a quick answer for b, but I just don't like that. It's not a general solution. There's some issues with that. And so I'm going to multiply this out. And so I'll get 5s plus 7 times a s squared plus 3s plus 2 plus b s squared plus b s plus 2. Sorry b s squared plus 2b s plus c s squared plus c s. And if I multiply that out just a little further, I would get a s squared plus 3a s plus 2a plus b s squared plus 2b s plus c s squared plus c s. 5s plus 7. So if this is going to be true for any power of s, um, I can take my coefficients individually. And so I've got s squared terms. I've got s to the first terms. And then I've got s to the 0 terms. So I'm going to start with s to the 0. And so 7 is equal to 2a. So I can solve that rather easily, and a is equal to 7 halves. And then I'm going to be left with kind of two equations and two unknowns. If I took s to the first, I would get 5 is equal to 3a plus 2b plus c. I already know the solution for a, so I could plug that in is 5 is equal to 21 halves plus 2b plus c. I could subtract that across. 21 halves is 10 and a half. So I guess I would get a negative 
5.5 is equal to 2b plus c. And then if I took my s squared equation, I would get 0 on the left. And then I'm going to get an a plus b plus c. Now we already know a. So this implies that a negative 7 halves is equal to b plus c. So I've now got two equations involving b and c. Um, I guess I'm just going to solve this one and say that c is equal to a negative 7 halves minus b. Then I can take that and shove it in there and see where we wind up. So a negative 11 halves is equal to 2b minus 7 halves minus b. So I'm going to get um, 2b minus b is just b. I'm going to add 7 halves to both sides. And so a negative 4 halves is equal to b. So b is just equal to negative 2. And if I took that back into this equation, if a negative 11 halves is equal to a negative 4 plus c, well, this is a negative 8 halves. So c must be a negative 3 halves. And so one verification of that we said that a plus b plus c was equal to 0. And we've got a is 7 halves, b is negative 2, and c is negative 3 halves. Did I, in fact, get that right? Um, it's not looking super great. <laughs> um, no, maybe it is. So this is negative 4 halves negative 3 halves, 7 minus 4 minus 3 does in fact work. And so my claim is that we are saying that y of s is equal to 7 halves over s minus 2 over s plus 1 minus 3 halves over s plus 2, which would lead to a y of t that is 1 minus 2e to the negative t minus 3 halves e to the negative 2t. And then it's understood that all of that is multiplied by 1 of t, or it's the equivalent of saying that this is the answer for t greater than or equal to 0, and y is equal to 0 for t less than 0. So the question is, if this is true, how do we verify that? Oh, this isn't a one. This is like, oh, that looks all messed up. This is a seven halves. Okay, so I claim this is correct partial fraction expansion algebra. How do I verify it? And in just a second, I'll show you how to verify that using IPython and the Python control module. So the question I'm trying to answer is that if I have this transfer function and I assume a step input, so I ultimately have this y of s here, I'm claiming that this is the correct partial fraction expansion and then inverse Laplace. Can I use the Python control module to verify that that is in fact the inverse Laplace of that? And so the thing that we're going to do is use the impulse response. If we have a y of s, um, the impulse response is just the inverse Laplace of the expression itself or of the transfer function itself. And so if I have this sort of as a transfer function, even though I kind of know that it's not. I mean, I could create the transfer function, create the step input, multiply we'll together, have y of s. Um, I could create the transfer function and find its step response and numerically verify that. But if I have any expression for some output of s and I want to know its inverse Laplace, it's the same as numerically taking the impulse response. And so let's demonstrate that for a minute. So I'm going to 
copy and paste some of my normal things. I guess I'll just get a file, new notebook. And so those are my normal matplotlib and numpy imports. And then I also have somewhere, I'm just going to import the control module. And so I do that. And so like I showed in my example, my transfer function is 5s plus 7 in my numerator, and my denominator is s squared plus 3s plus 2. So there's my transfer function, and then my input, um, I'm creating as a transfer function as well. Again, using that term slightly loosely. U is one over S. And so my output is my transfer function times my input. Like so, 5S plus 7 over S cubed plus 3S squared plus 2S. Um, if I wanted to, I could prove to myself that I have the right poles, negative one, negative two, or no, negative two, negative one, and zero, yada, yada, yada. So my claim, I'm gonna create a time vector. Um, I'm kind of just not really doing careful math in my head. So I'm guessing about what I want for a stop time. And we had this symbolic answer that was seven, halves minus two times e to the negative t minus three halves times e to the negative two t. Um, I have an invalid syntax. What are you doing to me? Oh, forgot my asterisk. Okay. And the question is, is that the same as taking the numeric answer from control dot impulse response of y comma t? And the verification would be to plot those. So t comma y numeric, and then t comma y symbolic, and I want that one to be dashed and thicker. And so my choice of T final doesn't seem too bad. I kind of got lucky on that one. And it seems like those two lines are directly on top of one another. And so I feel like this expression, which I found uh, in the previous part of this video via partial fraction expansion, does in fact line up with the numeric impulse response, which is essentially the, giving us an inverse Laplace numerically of this and they lie on top of one another, and if I wanted to be careful, I should label my x-axis and my y-axis, yada, yada, yada. But I have um, essentially proven that my answer numerically seems right. You could also then, if you wanted to go further, actually do the partial fraction expansion using SymPy or something like that and um, get the actual values that we found here, um, but that's not uh, necessarily what I'm trying to show in this video. Thanks.